and welcome to yet another edition of Arduino vs. Pi. I can't talk about food today. <laughs> I'm stuffed. I mean, I know there is this whole rules of YouTube, there's this whole fourth rule there now, you know, when you record this stuff, but yeah, we'll call this on New Year's Day. And we've just, well, just finished dinner. our big New Year's Day feast. Um, yeah. oh, man. Right, well, you picked this this one for this show, didn't you? Unfortunately. Last so. time. Unfortunately, so. Yeah, we've got these lovely little boards. Um, TCP224, something like that. Passive touch buttons. Um, now, we decided to make this just a little bit more interesting this time and take it a little bit further, haven't we? Yes. Because the first thing we found out about these things were technically you don't even need anything linked to it. You don't. Because when you push like the button, and there's basically four little buttons, what they buttons, it's just a bit of screen print, isn't it? But yeah. It senses your finger there. Um, it lights an LED up, but also the corresponding output turns high. Yeah. And that you can use to switch things on and off directly if you wanted to. Yeah. You'd or switch it to a transistor network and Yeah, in terms of how Arduino modules go, this one is is it, it, it just it just isn't. <laughs> Arduino throat high modules but we are using it on both. Yeah. Um I don't know if it showed up as a Pacific I think it was machine. originally for the Arduino. Oh, yeah, it came up as Arduino, did it? Right. Yeah. Well. So, anyway, so going a little bit more detail, I've designed basically mine's a very simple open lock game thing. Yes. And you've went and done. I've done rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, there's four buttons. Rock, paper, scissors, sorry for I give up. I like to call the one. There's one is rock, two is paper, three is scissors, and four is I give up. Right. Well, should we um, switch over to show the code in a minute, or should we show the actual devices running and then go over the code? Devices running and code? Uh, well, yours we can, mine I can't. Well, oh, yours you don't see. I anything. have to do the same time, yeah, because nothing happens. Well, if I do mine, we go over to the other camera and yes, look at mine running. Um, well, actually, mine's got a bit of a problem with running as well. Part of mine's on, you'll see, on the actual hardware and parts on the software. Yeah, so you're not going to have to do. Everyone on the mobile device is going to scream at us for this. We're going to have to do picture We're going to have to do picture in picture. Um, and obviously the least important part will be in the small picture. Um, so Which be us. Yeah. <laughs> we are important. But no, um, which for yours, a bit hard to say. Your both show stuff. Mine, the least important puns, the buttons. Well, could we do a pre. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, then what about. No, no, all right, on mine, we lose us altogether. Well, we would lose us altogether, we use an right. for that. Use that, which will show that and that, yeah. and the other picture would be that, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's what i Which will show the um, serial monitor. Mm. Right, just quickly before I go over to loop we all get lost, there was a few issues of the uh, Jew, I do Jew that we found. And I've got a couple of other issues as well because I just stuffed LEDs in the holes. Yeah. Well, I don't always make connection. Yes. Then I get to wiggle them. <coughs> it seems to not do what we said before. The set more height. It actually seems to set them into some sort of limbo state. Yeah. So once I've output it, it then immediately, if I don't do anything else, or try to set it high, it goes to a wibbly wobbly hmm. unknown state. It's not high, not low. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So, because what I was hoping on this, I was going to pull the, the ground side low and leave it low. Yeah. But it doesn't work. It keeps bouncing and going to a wibbly wobbly state. That's great. So I have to keep resetting the low to low and the high to high to get the LEDs to do stuff. Mm. Um, right, so we've switched this camera and switched to my screen. Now, one of the other things that people might not know, when you use the um, 
the serial monitor, mm. it resets the Arduino as well. Yeah. So if I could start, if I was, that's the code's already running, as soon as I bring up the serial monitor, it will actually reset that. Yeah. And start again at the beginning. Yes. Right, now I'll show you the code. Very simple code. I'm going to run through it quite quickly because it's not really very different to what we had once before. Starts off, set up all your pins, just set them in arrays. The self explanatory output for the, obviously the LEDs. GND is going to be the ground pins for the LEDs. And input is going to be the, the inputs that have come from the board. I'll then set up four buttons. Set them as naught to begin with, and a counter for how many times it's had a press. Then in the setup part, set up all your pins, set up the serial. Very, very simple. Forward setup is probably the easiest section of the lot, which is highlighted there. Moving on, void loop, which everyone that does Arduino will know is a bit that supposedly loops on forever, but this one I've uh, adjusted so it doesn't. Basically checks the number press if it equals four for somehow it's outside of the main if loop. And it's got a four, it goes, oh something's wrong, sets the alarm off. Which is on the top line of that one, which is if press equals equals four. Resets it back to naught. Don't know why I'd bother doing that. Just a habit. Then it calls an alarm routine which never ends. Um, if you it doesn't send so here, this line is where it does. If button one does not equal nor button two does not equal button three, and if button four does equal nor, then it will do. It will move on. Increment the presses. Then it checks which it was pressed and then delays for a second. That way you can only press a button once every one second. This is where you this void press is where it checks which button was pressed. And hopefully press in the right order. Mm. If a button's pressed, it'll always update presses. If it's on press one and you've you've already pressed button two, then that's actually the, the correct number to press. It will output the number two to the screen to the serial monitor, and then turn LED two on on the actual Arduino, not the board which always comes on all the time. Then it speeds 1, 4 and 3. If you get to the right end of the right code and you get all the way down to here and it's right, it will then print on the serials one or so that you've uh, opened the door. If you get it wrong, it will flash, it will say you've got it wrong on the screen. and flash all four LEDs on for a quarter of a second and then off for a quarter of a second then back to the beginning again by printing on the screen yet again that you've uh, entered incorrect code and the alarm's been set off. Um, at the end of this routine, if it, all it does is calls its own routine so it goes back to the beginning again. And then void open here, which door open when the door's been opened, it will call void open which then just loops around and end the loop on itself. That way the only way of getting back is to reset the Arduino. So if I bring up the serial monitor and press 2, you see the LED 2's come up and the 2's come up on the screen. 1, 4, 3, it says door open, we'll sit there forevermore. If I reset the Arduino and just keep pressing all numbers, If it's reset properly, they go off for too many numbers. It says on the you entered the code wrong, and these flash constantly. So it does exactly what it should do. If you notice, it doesn't clear the screen off when I reset. That's because it's not a real terminal screen. It's only a fake one, really. It's not a real serial mm. terminal. Um, that is really. It for mine that's quite simple. Yes, so now we just but it works. It does. So I'm just going to beam this round 
Big Do we need to see one again? Ah, uh, no. Right, good. Yes. I'm yes. not plugged in. I mean, no, yes. in. Flat the points and says from the end. Oh well, well I'm plugged right, in. I'm going to take my laptop out of the way. Yes. Why? Because obviously um, I'm going to bring the box out. Yes. And now for my code, my code is a bit complicated in some ways. Uh, it's all really easy concepts. Um, obviously it's like we said before, it is a game of um, rock, paper, scissors. Scissors, rock paper, scissors. Isn't it? Yeah, it's rock, paper, scissors with the most Rudimentary. basic flawed logic you can have. Um, I could have done more advanced, but I was sort of just this only proved the concept. We're not actually trying to make a rock paper scissors or a door alarm system. We're just showing we can interface the modules, they work, and that we can do some snazzy stuff with them for our pointing system. <coughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, imports right the top, just a lot of snazzy. But yeah. We get that GPIO pins uh, set up. And um, we also import time for a small delay, just so you can't, you know, just so it doesn't pick up, you press two, like 50 times, you only press it once. Um, and random, because on the first time it picks, because um, it doesn't know what you've already picked and what you've picked before, it starts by picking a random selection between rock, paper and scissors. So in many ways, the first turn is always going to be the hardest to fall in. Although I haven't lost against the yet. Oh, when I was doing a delivery. Um, and then we have this endless loop, and obviously all that endless loop is for is because, obviously, like I said before, Python does not like endless loops, so you have to trick it into thinking that it isn't an endless loop, even though it actually is. Basically what I was doing. Yeah, but backwards. Probably not. Yeah, we use that to do yours the other way around. Um, yeah, and then over here we have, we set up our buttons uh, in an array, and then we just set them all up as inputs. Um, because obviously they're, we're just going to see if they're high or low, and that's all we care about. Luckily, we did find that these can take the 3.3 volts, which I required. Yes, um, and I didn't really want to put 5 volts into a pie, aren't we? Um, and yet, when they're down here, I set up that delay, which is the exact same. I probably use it in pretty much every project when I have to do a delay. Just because all I have to do is type in that delay, open bracket, close bracket, and then all of my delay time is all set by that one global variable. Mm. So it's really nice to set up. Um, and then down here, this is where we actually start playing. Well, we don't start playing, but this is where we actually start with the code. Just quickly to interrupt you, I suppose you could change the delay if you wanted, couldn't you? Yeah. You could feed it a value. Oh yeah, it'd be, it'd be easy to do. And yeah, I mean, you know, we're finally by my code now. Um, so this is that loop I was saying about where it falls in, thinking it's not endless when it's endless until you press 4 where you exit. Um, so we're just going to start off by setting up the turn at just the computer's turn and the player turn, because you don't want them to have any values in at the beginning of the turn. Um, and then the next thing it does is just prints out the instructions. So it's rock, paper, scissors, press 1 for rock, 2 for paper, 3 for scissors, or 4 to quit. Um, and then you go down here, and this basically I just set up the computer player where it's just going to look through, and if you if it doesn't have any data yet, all it's going to do is going to do a random choice um, on either rock, paper, or scissors. Um, and then after that, if you've previously chosen rock, it's going to choose scissors, um, just because it's basically what beats what you last done, and then what beats what you last done, which, you know, what beats what beats what you last done. Um, and yeah, it just does that for rock, paper, and scissors. Um, and then he goes down here, and then this is where the player does their turn. Um, so it's waiting for an input at this stage when it's run. And it's waiting for player to make a turn, basically. So either you press 1, 2, 3, or 4. If you press 4, it knows you don't want to play and you want to quit. And that's when it changes the loop variable so it can exit the loop. And um, if you press 1, it sets your answer to rock, 2, paper, 3, scissors. And then we go down here, and this is where we actually start to... Just down here, this is where we do the win conditions. This is where it checks if they're the same, then it's a draw. If you picked rock but the computer picked paper, you've lost. If you picked rock, the, the computer picked scissors, etc., etc., it just knows how, if it's won, if it's lost. Um, it's all done pretty much in these few lines of code here. I mean, I do believe we're actually missing some out of the screen here. Uh, there you go, scroll down there, and that's the rest of the code. 
Um, you know, it's nothing really major. It is a little bit long, and there's a delay right to the bottom of the screen because that is the end of a turn. Um, so yeah, five put on to pitch and pitch now. And we start playing, just play around. Just so you can see the general gist of just how it works. Um, so I'll see you on Pi. I just get to press F5 and upload it to the Python. And I'll just scroll that up. Here's what I'm saying now. It's asking you. Yeah, we're playing rock, paper, scissors. One for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. So I'm going to prick two just because it's why I picked every time I've been, been in the game so far. Um, so there you go. I'll just try and do this in such a way you can see what's going on. There's the one, two, three, four. I'm pressing two, which I should probably press one and two. But there you go. I pressed paper. Um, he picked rock, so I win. Pretty simple. And now, obviously, I know that it's on the island on paper, so he's going to pick rock. So I could just yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that. So now comes the big point. Who won? Whoa, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. It's tough. Well, well, let's just go have a quick brief over it. We both did a game. Yeah. And we both did it. So we both get a point there, anyway, yeah, don't we? Yeah. Um, Flourish, I'll say you win the point for. In what? In what respect? That if I turn this back around. Do, 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 do. You have the lights. Oh, I put some LEDs on. Yeah, which means... <laughs> and you could see what was going on without the screen. You didn't actually need the screen. Yeah, you can. I mean, that's why I did that bit at the end where it flashes, like, you know, alarm's gone off. Yeah. But obviously, you know, if I played... Well, I could put a little sound on it and yeah. I'd done that. Then I wouldn't need the screen at all. Cause yeah. No, you got it wrong. But if you look at mine, you know... That just does nothing without the code running. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely want the flourish point. Um, code lengths, I think, they're pretty good, both of them, I think. Yeah, for all we've done, they weren't particularly bad. Mm. Both of us could have shortened it. Yeah, I mean, I could have shortened it. I mean, I had to extend mine a little bit due to the way it does the pen IOs. Mm. Then obviously this now also gives them an opportunity when it comes to them. They're the uh, challenge we sell each day. Or yeah. Can they shorten it? If they want one of these boards, they can uh, shorten the code. Yes. And the best bit that we get, if we get anything. Yeah. Please give us something, but if you don't, you don't. Well, we don't care. Yeah. It's as it is, isn't it? It's be as it is. If we get something, the best one. Yeah. We'll uh, get back in contact and um, they can have the. Uh, Little board. Yes. No, you're not having the Arduino Duo or the Raspberry Pi. No, the TTP two two four. Just the TTP, just the little board. For now, going, for now, yeah. Well, um, I can't think of what other bits we picked for scoring. I think that's. I remember it was flourish, can you do it, and length. I suppose the fourth one we should actually do, and we should start implementing is. What they pick as well, which one they prefer. Out of the yeah, two well, projects. because we've had nothing back, we can't. So. Yeah, but we haven't even put these up for the first time we've recorded this one. Yeah, but no, but they can't straight away, can they? So we'd have to think about that at a later stage. Yeah. So I suppose, going by that at the moment, I've won this one. You have won this one. So because the first one was a draw, you are currently winning. Yeah. Right, well, we, we do have Dean's marvellous pie box. Pie box. Been adjusted. Is that still attached? Yeah. Oh wow. Look at the back, you've got a door. What's that? Who are they? Oh! Oh! Ow! I'm switching around to get something out. I've got something. Oh my god. Um, I've got that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's, um,. I believe it's a temperature humidity stroke sensor. humidity sensor, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the challenge is to give one who can breathe under the hardest. <sighs> um, That's not... Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to use the serial monitor again, I suppose. Yeah. Or lights. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
definitely interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see. Something. Sign up, or it won't yeah. close that back up because we're not allowed to look in there until. Until unless we add more modules, we never look no, inside. No, no, yeah, we never look inside until. Well, we never look inside full stop, do we? No. I didn't look then, I'll just open, put my hand in, stab myself, pull something out. Yeah. Well, if we get stuck in your finger first, wins. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's the end of this one. Yeah. Um, we'll see you next time, we'll be crying over that one. Yeah. Guess I'll be buying another one of those. Yeah. The second one, then, ready.